Hey guys, Juan Klo here. In today's episode of BitX101, do we want to take a look on how you can actually build the ESP-MANA repository to a firmware and to a factory file. So let's get started and right into it. All right, as you can see, we're currently sitting in Visual Studio Code, our chosen IDE that we want to use to actually do all the things. So we do have a couple of pre-requirements that we need to do. Uh, first off, in the extensions, you need to be sure that you do have the ESP-IDF installed. If you do install this for the first time, you will see some sort of a setup guide. And I will quickly open that. Uh, we can configure the IDF and there's one important task to do with it. So recently I was telling you to use the version 5.1.3, but it turns out that this might cause a couple of issues. So click on Express and by using this, look for the version 5. Point, let me see where I can find it. Uh, 5.3 beta 1. Uh, this one we will use and it turns out that this is not causing any issues for the building instructions and therefore your bit eggs should run just fine. Select this and click on install and then it should be inserted on your system. As you do see, I already have this info installed, the version 5.3 beta 1. Okay, enough of that. What we want to gonna do after that is we want to take a look on the configuration file because this is pretty important. And let me quickly delete the binary file and let's open up the config file. So in here, we do see that we can set up a couple of things. First thing, for example, is the Wi-Fi SSID. What you could do instead of writing test here, you can write in your actual Wi-Fi SSID, so the naming of your Wi-Fi and underneath the password. Further than, you can also already type in here your IP address or the naming of the server. If you're gonna use public pool, it's public-pool.io and for the port, you just need to choose the port of public pool. And for the Stratum user, you can put in your Bitcoin address. Further down, we do see there are a couple of things as the frequency, the voltage, and uh, which, kind of, which kind of ASIC you're gonna use to actually decide how the configuration should look like. Take a look on the GitHub repository. There are a couple of pre-configurations of the config.cvs file. In this example is for the BM1368, uh, which is the one from the Super. As you do see, the device model here is the Super, as well as the port version is set to 400. You might increase this to 401, depending on what kind of device you do have in front of you. If you do have the 204 board, you just change this, change this to Ultra, and uh, then the Beam 1368 to the Beam 1366. This is just an example, but you should get the point. After that, what we need to do is we need to click on terminal and create a new terminal. And in here, we need to change into a repository, into the main HTTP underscore server, and then into XOS. In here, you need to type in npm-i for npm install. This should install the latest requirements. Let me quickly take a look here. Yeah, that's looking fine. Uh, npm, npm-y. If you don't have a node running on your PC, I will not do a tutorial on how to insert this. There are plenty of tutorials out there, so just check it out. It should be fairly simple. After you've run the npm i, you can run the npm run build, and this should build the web UI for BitX and the so-called XOS firmware. All right, after you've done that, we can change back to the main repository, and in here, what we need to do is we need to write idf.py build. If you have built before, do a full clean before that. So instead of writing build, you write in full clean. And this will do a full clean for you. As you do see, we're sitting in the regular terminal. So the IDF commands are not working here. So what you can do is either go to view common palette and then you, ESP, you type in on ESP-IDF, open ESP-IDF terminal, or what you also can do is down here, you do see there is a, uh, all the way down, let me bring this up here maybe, one second. Let me make it a little bit smaller. Down here, you do see there is a small icon, and this will open an ESP-IDF terminal. In here, we can write an idf.py for clean to clean up the repository. And after that, it's important you write in idf.py build. This will build the general ESP-minor binary file and the ESP 
the www.binary file. That's the starting point. We will quickly let this run through. What we need to do after that is we need to actually configure and build a config.binary file because what we want to do today is we want to create a binary file which hosts the configurations that we set in our config file up here already into the factory file so that we do have some sort of a factory file that we can actually flash using the bidx tool. In order to do that, we need to switch to our IDF uh, directory. So this might be, depending on your PC, a little bit different. I can switch here over to the ESP, ESP IDF. And in here, what I can do is type in port. Uh, oh no, I don't need to do that, I'm sorry. Uh, I can come back to documents and then GitHub and ESP-1. Uh, what we need to do actually is we need to run a specific command because what we do have here is we have the configuration file already set and now we want to create this configuration.binary file. So what we need to do is we need to go into the ESP, ESP IDF and in here we need to go into components, into NVS flash, NVS partition generator and in here we want to use the NVS partition gen pi and generate and generate a config config dot uh, from the config cvs we want to create the config dot binary which should be re written to the ox 6000 let's see if this works and as you see we now do have the config dot bin written here that's perfect now we do have everything that we need to use there are two scripts in here, or a couple more. We do have the merge bin update, we have the merge bin with config, and we have the merge bin. What we actually need to do is we need to create a file that is the factory file. And how we're going to do that is fairly simple. What you need to do is we need to write in sla dot slash merge bin. Uh, this will actually create uh, the factory file if you just type it in with the merge bin uh, dot, dot sh and then we can name it for example esp dash minor dash factory and then name it whatever you want for this example i'm in the pre-release of 2.1.7 all right as you see it seems like i do have a problem here in the terminal with the esp idf what we can do here instead of using that is we can go back either into our bash terminal and then export the IDF or just stay in this. I opened up quickly a new terminal and what I did is I was going into the uh, ESP, ESP IDF directory. In here you need to type in dot and then dot slash export.sh. This will actually export the ESP IDF so that you can work with it. And what we can do then is we need to go back into our documents. One second, documents, and then in here into the repository. And now you, what you can do is you can merge bin.sh and name it then esp minor factory and then dash version 2.1.7.binary. And this will actually create the factory file for the binary. As you do see, it is now here in there. What we want to do here is we also want to put in the configuration. So what you need to do then is you actually need to use the slash merge bin underscore with config sh. And then you name it esp dash minor dash factory uh, dash whatever v2.2.2.1.7 the bin this should also create this let's see uh, let me let me give this a name uh, merge two and four and now this should be created and as you do see I now have two different binary files I could use the esp minor two four factory file to specifically run this on a bitx ultra with the board version two or four or I do have a regular one which does not contain any configurations in it, so it will be empty. So uh, yeah, that's possible, but not the best way. If you want to create yourself a factory file, you should go the route with merging with the configuration binary.
That's it for today's video. If you do think this was helpful, so then consider giving this video a, a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so don't miss out on any further videos. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.